Good day everyone, Nigon here from the IRA forums and I'm going to be doing a multi-part tutorial on soldering. Um, today's uh, episode we're going to basically go over the basic uh, equipment you'll need to have a really good soldering experience for the lightsaber hobby. Okay so the first thing you really need is kind of obvious but it's a very good ESD safe soldering station. So here I have this SparkFun uh, 936B. It's a very good station. They sell it online for only like 40 bucks or something. And it's ESD safe, it's variable temperature. Um, and I actually have the older version, which as you can see the little uh, satellite thing that holds the iron just has the uh, sponge. And the new version is the same price and it actually comes with the, like the brass sponge instead of just the water sponge, which is better. Uh, but the, I really, really highly recommend this soldering station. Some people prefer the Weller. That's, those are great too. It's a little more expensive though. Uh, I was looking for something a little more economical. And I found this to be great. I actually do my um, a lot of my Niter repair boards just with this iron. And it works great. Even the standard tip it comes with. Okay, so the first thing you need is pretty obvious. is that. Okay, the next thing you're going to need besides this station. Let me zoom back out. Uh, the next thing you're going to need to have your good station for soldering is, of course, a nice solder. I buy this, uh, you know, these small tubes. I buy it sometimes from Radio Jack, sometimes from my other uh, mom and pop local store. Uh, this is like 60-40 rosin core uh, solder. It's pretty standard. I've used silver bearing too. It all works pretty well. Um, I prefer these small tubes though than the, the wire rim because I, I like to actually hold this in my hand. And make sure you get something that's like a thin size. You don't want to get too much solder at once. And the next thing you need, and this is this one is extremely overlooked, but you really, really need this if you're going to be doing uh, uh, like onboard soldering, like on the igniter, or especially you really need this if you're going to be doing the LED engine soldering. Uh, this is a jar of rosin soldering flux, and I hope this can. I hope you can read that. It kind of looks like the camera might make it blurry, but this is a. Uh, it's like a jar, see here, with a screw-off lid, um, and when you open it, it's it's like a paste. It's a really thick, yellowish, really ugly-looking, nasty paste, and I even accidentally got some junk in there. It doesn't really matter, but uh, this stuff is amazing, though. What you do is you just lightly dab the end of your uh, solder in this, and then put it on the, like, where you're going to solder. You, usually, like, you use this for a pad, not so much for wires, but if you're going to solder a wire to a pad. So you put this on the pad, um, rub it a little, and then pre-tin the pad with that, and it helps the solder flow to the pad. So then you can get your pad pre-tinned. Um, then you just uh, put some solder on the other side of the wire, and then with this already on the pad, and you put it together, the water will just the wire will just solder right on the pad extremely easily. And one other thing that I found extremely helpful, um, well, of course, a lot of people have this, the helping hands. Um, I use this mostly for the sponge because the sponge in this is super thick and awesome. Uh, it's, I like it a lot. I mean, a brass sponge is good too if you have one of those. You probably don't need that. Um, but this, the, the, I find that these helping hands, I don't like to clip too much heavy stuff in these and push on it because no matter how tight you tight these, there's always some wiggle. I usually use this to support stuff and it's still resting on the ground. Um, but the other thing you really need, honestly, is a nice, really thick piece of board small piece of board that's what I have here and this is where I actually just lay my LED engines right on this board and heat it up and solder it and you can see all the burn marks and stuff but I found this to actually work better than putting the LED engine trying to clip it on here and not get it you know clipping it here get it injured you just stick it down here you won't have any problems um, so this is really your basic setup uh, th these are those parts are mostly what I use and then you can see around of course you have your wire snips, you need a good pair of these like snips and strippers uh, for a small gauge. This this goes from 18 to 32. Um, I've got my big pair of forceps. I don't use these often. Uh, then the la of course the last thing you're going to need that you could use which is useful especially for me when doing SMD soldering is like a small thin nose pair of tweezers. This is for if you're going to like hold a resistor down or something when you solder it. Um, but those, with those tools, I mean all of those tools, all of this stuff here on the bench um, costs about a hundred bucks with all of that stuff and you may or may not need all of it. 
So this will pretty much get you a really good station going with all this stuff. Um, and yes, with, without, without further ado, I guess I will uh, stop this lesson and go to the next one. Okay, until the next one, guys, I will talk to you on forums. Bye-bye.